everyone, and welcome to our recorded webinar on uh, using the gradebook in the Mastering a Platform. And I want to give you a quick little note about a new feature that we're offering, which is continuing education units for attending our online training. I wanted to make sure that those listening to this recording know that we are only able to provide those for our live sessions. So if you are interested in receiving continuing education units, then I suggest you get out of this recording and go sign up for the same topic with your um, in a live session, and the facilitator will walk you through how to get CEUs for attending these sessions. But if you're just needing this information, you're in the right spot and continue listening as I pass this on to one of our faculty advisors, Gary Glazer, who um, has been a uh, mastering power user for many years and is going to talk to you about the great book. So, uh, Gary, I'm going to pass it on to you. Thanks for doing this for us. All right. Thank you. So today the idea is to go through and figure out how to get the most out of your gradebook, how to get it set up, how to understand what the students are using it, and to make sure that you can answer any questions the students might have on it. So the first thing you're looking at right now is going to be looking at a demo course. Now you can notice that this is the gradebook already, so we've already left the home screen. So we're in the gradebook, and you can see a lot of different colors in the gradebook themselves. So if we go down, you'll see all different shades of pinks and kind of going all the way to whites here. So what this is actually telling you is these colors are all telling you what's going on with the students. So if we go over here to this view legend, you'll notice that there could be a possible four different colors depending on the different assignments. So right now, all the assignments we have in here are going to be your typical homework assignments or quizzes. But you could have other ones in, things like adaptive follow-up, which would be showing as a green column. You could have dynamic study modules. You could have your learning catalytics. But the idea is the color coding gives you a quick snapshot. It allows you to look very quickly and say, hey, this is a follow-up. This is a homework. This is a, and allows for a very fast look. But now within each column, we can have other color coding. So in this particular column, let's say we go under this chapter 30 homework, which you can see you can use the top title, just put your mouse over it, and it tells you what the due date is, as well as how many points are assigned. But you can always see the assigned points in this row right here that is assigned points. Below that gives you a class average. But then the actual column itself, you can see how there's anything from a white all the way down to this more of a pinkish color here. Well, as you're going through the different hues, going from the white down to kind of like a lighter pink, a little more pink to the darkest, that's showing you a very quick look at which students did well or did not so well on this assignment. But a lot of times you might wonder, well, okay, fine, the student didn't do very well, but did they actually do the work or did they just blow it off and give zero because they didn't try? That's where these little thermometers come in. On the side of the, each individual student's homework or quiz, these thermometers will tell you how many of the actual assignment uh, questions they completed. So you can see, for example, this student right up top here did zero of the three assigned ones. Well, that zero they earned was because they didn't do the work. But this student down here, they did all three of them, but still got a zero. So you know they went through it and they tried the assignment, they put the work in to do it, but still didn't get the information. So it kind of helps you differentiate if the students are just not even bothering or if the students are trying and just not getting it. The second way to think about it, if you look by the row. To go across, you might see some students that have zeros all the way across. Either they're not even bothering to try or they're just really not grasping the concept. But it's a nice way to give you a quick look at what's going on with students. How are they doing and what's happening? As you can see, sometimes the students get the assignment no problem. This particular chapter 35, the students are almost all white except for the one student that didn't complete it. So now, when you're looking at this, these are all the actual scores. So when you start thinking about the scores, it's not the only bit of information the students are being collected in this gradebook. If you scroll back up, you can also see that then we have a time category. 
So click on that. You can notice now that instead of scores, it's identifying how long each student took on each assignment. So again, it's color-coded. But you can notice them giving you the idea of how long the class take. Well, as a whole, this class took 19 minutes on Chapter 35. But you can see some students are longer, some students are shorter. So it gives you that kind of quick snapshot into saying, okay, are the students working on this as long as I feel they should? Or, hey, was this assignment faster than I thought it should be? So you can kind of go back in and say, you know, every other student in the class, we're looking at these assignments taking a half hour. Why did you only take five minutes to do your homework? So it gives you this kind of insight into really, are they putting the effort in or are they simply going through and clicking choice A, choice A, choice A, choice A, all the way through. So it gives you the idea of timing. Or the third tab here is difficulty. If you click on that one, it'll show you the assignment's difficulty based on each student. So now if we're looking at this evolution one, for example, come down. The student, first student had a difficulty of one, then student two had a difficulty of four, then some ones and the difficulty down here five. So it kind of gives you an idea of where the students are falling in these particular assignments. Well, maybe student 11 down here didn't do very well in the homework. When you look back and realize, well, their homework was difficulty of five. The difficulty level goes from one to five. That's the most difficult possible. So if there are varying difficulties within a homework, it could help you identify why maybe a student was struggling or why there was an issue there that the student was questioning about. So you can really go down and check by difficulty, time, and by score. But now, a lot of times you might have more than just a couple of students in. If you have a class of 20 or 24, all right, it might be easy to see it all in one look. But if you have a large lecture section of two, three, four hundred students, they might be scattered in different work groups or different labs. Or maybe you're simply taking three or four different sections and putting them all together in one mastering course. The gradebook allows you to filter out. It allows you to take those and categorize them to looking at maybe section one or section two. So if we go up to this filter section right here, now, these groups have already been pre-input for the demo course, but you could add any category, any filter you want. So for this one, I'm just going to put in here and say Group A is the filter. Click on Save. And now all of a sudden, we have fewer names in the gradebook. The gradebook has filtered by anyone that was labeled under that Group A tag. So maybe this was a lab section, or maybe this was your different groups you have for group teamwork. The idea is, though, it allows you to look at smaller subsets of your entire class to see how a particular grouping of students is doing. So you can add one filter, two filters, however many filters you want per time. Simply clearing all filters, and they're gone. But now to add these filters, you need to go into the roster. Because when you go on the roster, you'll have a listing of all your students. You'll be able to see their IDs, their logins. But here's this group column. It's this group column that allows you to add and categorize them however you like. So if you notice, this top one has three different groups they're in. But then others only have one group. So you can add into any group you want by simply clicking the Add Edit Groups. What it allows you to do is you get every group that you already have, or if those aren't enough, you can create new ones by adding a new group. Now, as you start going through to add new group, it gives you blanks at the bottom just to type in. You could do testing, oops, wrong keyboard. Testing, hey, whoops, hold on. So right here, go testing, one, two, three. Well, then you now save that. No problem. You have a new group. Close that out, and now you have to add the students in the group. Well, let's say you want to add this student number seven into that new testing group. 
by clicking on this little plus symbol, and then the drop-down menu gives you all your choices and the new testing. Just like that, the student is added into that new group. So again, you can add as many groups as you want. You can keep simply clicking and clicking. Five, six, seven, eight, tons of groups. Simply minus sign to delete them. I'll get rid of these ones. So it really allows you to have one kind of master course, but then at the same time, it allows you to subdivide into smaller groups that way. So let's go back into the gray book now and the leave page. So now, with that, it allows you to have the full power of filtering the way you set it up, completely customizable, which allows you to set it based on any criteria you want, any grading scheme you want. But now, let's say you have a student that comes to your office hours or comes to you after a class and asks, you know what, hey, my homework, I had a question, I didn't get this, I missed it the first time, missed it the second time, hey, maybe I got it the third time. But if they're not sure, not understanding, you can go right into their homework, see what they answered and what the responses were. So if we go into over here, let's say this chapter 30 for the student number eight, you click on the score and it brings up what they did. So now in this particular one, you can see there were three different questions that were on this particular homework assignment. It tells you how many points the student earned out of possible points. And this one actually has a late penalty included. Now you may or may not have a late penalty in your course, but again, all custom features that you could put into your mastering course as you set up your assignments. So I'll go back and just look for one other assignment here. So you can find a little different one here. Let's go into that one. So this way we don't have the late deduction. So now, let's say the student had a question saying, you know what, I just don't understand this translocation and flow map. Just it's not clicking with me. Got it right, but I didn't get the full points. For this student now, you can click on the actual title of the question. It'll bring up the question. Now, it'll tell you exactly when they started it. It'll tell you when they finished it. Tell you how long they took. So if you see durations here of only a couple seconds, well, either that student really got the idea very quickly, or they weren't even caring. They're just clicking. So as you scroll on down, you can see they got this first part correct, no problem. They got the second one correct, got the third one correct, fourth, but then you get to the one where they missed it. So their first response here, so it's looking at active transport and osmosis. Well, osmosis is correct but they just keep on going and going, and eventually you realize, hey, you can see all the information, all the questions the student got right or wrong. Here, well, this one they had wrong to start with. It can tell you how long they took for each choice here. Were they really rereading the questions, or did they maybe have an A or B choice? They weren't really sure which one was the correct answer to start with. They picked the wrong one, went to their second choice. Here, we're talking 13 seconds between their first and second choice. Well, in 13 seconds, the question is, were they rereading it or just simply pick another one that they thought was the right answer? But it tells the students some response, some feedback. You know, it doesn't tell them why or what the correct answer was, but it gives them some hints, some ideas that might make them think more about what the correct answer could be. So it's trying to basically help them along to find the correct answer but it's not giving them the correct answer. So you can go into every single question the student has. Go through it and help them out with that if you want. But you also have the feature then from the gradebook going right into their assignments. If you have students that need accommodations, maybe extra test time, or maybe it's a larger window of availability, these can all be adjusted right within this screen, right from the gradebook. Or maybe the student just had a problem and you need to reset everything. You can fully reset, let them start again. So there's a lot of ways of giving information back to the student, but also letting the faculty members look into the information and say, you know what? Every student missed a lot of these questions. There was not a great assignment here. And you can look through and say, you know what? 
maybe this question has a second interpretation, or maybe something was misspoken or misinterpreted in class. But it gives you a way of looking back and getting an overview. Now, as far as how you set these preferences up for grading and display and everything else, you have a whole set of gradebook preferences. So if you end up going up into this Manage tab right here, this Manage link, we have four different tabs. We'll start with the preferences. Maybe you need to have the ID column shown. Maybe it's something that you reference to help identify your students. Login names all can be added or subtracted out of the visual gradebook. Those thermometers I mentioned, the ability to see how much of the assignment was completed. You could have them for credit items or if you have practice items. So maybe you have a couple practice items that then they move into the actual assignment. It can show you do they complete those or not. The color coding, helping tell you if they did a great job of the assignment or maybe not so hot. If they're not due, some people don't like to see what's coming up as much. This way it's not cluttering up the gradebook as much. Turn them on, turn them off. And again, same type of idea. If there's no scores recorded, maybe you don't want to see those yet. So there's a lot of features that can be customized here. But just remember, anything you change, you have to click on Save, otherwise it doesn't count. So to go over to the categories and weighting. Now, one of the nice things about this gradebook is if you want to, you can use this for your gradebook for your entire course. You can bring outside scores in and have your complete grading system right within this gradebook. Now, there are going to be some default categories, things like homework. You'll have a default for quiz, for labs maybe. But you can add in any category you want. Simply type in a category and hit add. But when you're setting these up, so let's say maybe you have a quiz category, you have a pre-test and a post-test category, you have a homework, you have a lab category. Maybe all those aren't carrying equal weight. So right now, everything's graded equally. You can see each category is going to be 12.5%. Well, maybe you want your categories to be weighted based on points. Maybe your course is out of 1,500 points, and it's just a pure points basis. Simply change over to points. It will then end up going through and weighing the categories based on how many possible points are inside. If you notice, almost all the points are in homework. That's because the homework assignments are really what's loaded in this demo course. Maybe saying, so you know what, it's not by points. I have mine by percentages. I like to have my exams or my practicals scoring higher and being more weight to the grade than a homework assignment would. Well, in that case, simply go down to custom. In the case of custom, you can put your own factor in. You can say, okay, fine. Let's go down to the test or the quizzes and say, okay, I want quizzes to be a higher percentage. You can enter in your any point total you want. So it's all depending on how you're adding and subtracting your points. So this way, you can give any weighting you want. And then even within the categories, so just the overall general, here are my major categories of the course. But within the categories, let's say homework, for example. Now, every homework assignment is going to be weighted equally. But you might have some homework assignments that are going to take only 10 or 15 minutes, only like three or four questions. Or maybe you have other ones that are meant to take an hour or more because they're very large, very in-depth. Well, some people want those to be the same weight. Others will say, you know what? The students are putting more work into this. I want to give more credit or more points to the longer ones. Well, within the category, change the assignment weighting. Go right by points. So therefore, now the ones that have more points, see for example right here, this particular chapter 3 is over 10%. That's because it has more points, available more questions in the homework. So the students are getting more points based on the more work that's necessary, the more questions in the assignments. Or again, 
could be completely custom. If you have certain weights you want each mark to be, you can put it in however you want. And as you go through this, it'll give you a live running total at the bottom. So you get 10, 20, and keep on going through that. And if you want to go through it, well, let's see if we got this going. Well, if you keep on adding and adding, and oh, this one's a big one, that one's big, and all of a sudden we're over 100. That's not going to allow it to be taken, so we'll have to go back and make sure we keep it down to the actual 100 mark. So I'm just going to get rid of all these for now so we don't worry about saving those. So it really comes down to however you want the rating to be, by category, by assignment. But now if you're thinking, okay, fine, that's great for what's in mastering, but I give in-class lecture exams. Those scores can also be brought in. If you go to this Offline Activities tab. Now there's no offline activities in here currently. All I have to do is create one. Create Offline Activity. By clicking on that, you go through and you give your information. Maybe it'll say it's Exam 1. If you want, give a description. You put it in the category you want. So if you are bringing exams in, you'd make an exam category or a test category. However many points you have. And then this due date is just for when the scores are released. It's not necessarily when your due date for the exam is. But if you're entering scores in over a period of time, maybe you don't want certain students to be able to see the scores before the other students. It's not fair. So you can say that the scores are not visible until this particular day passes. That way you can give yourself a little bit of time to enter these scores in with nobody seeing their scores. Because no reason, you really don't want those hundreds of emails coming in saying, well, where's my score? So-and-so saw theirs. So it gives you the ability to kind of hang on to that and let them all be released at once. Or if there's never option, maybe you don't want them seeing the scores. So this can add in. So I'm just going to save this now so we can keep it in there. And now we have the exam one. And just left it under homework because I didn't have the category in currently. So go back to categories and waiting. We should see an exam one now on homework. So here's homework. And there's our exam one right at the bottom. Now, if you notice, I have it waiting right now by points within the homework category. Because I gave it 75 points, it shows up as one of the largest assignments in this category. So you could make it in an exam category, and maybe your exams have different point values. But again, it can be completely customized how you go through this. It's all up to how you want to set it up. And then the last thing over here is this export gradebook data. Now, if you're not using the Mastering Gradebook as your only gradebook, maybe you're trying to take it into a learning management system, something like Blackboard or Moodle. Well, you can simply export these grades out, and then depending on your school's configuration, should be a pretty easy import in. Now, as far as what your learning management system might be, there are different choices. From the different versions of Blackboard, you have the last version of AngelUp. Go down to Canvas, Moodle, Desire to Learn. This way, the file will be formatted for what's going into your course. Now, one thing you definitely want to make sure checking with your school's IT or whoever administers your learning management system is figure out how the students are sorted in your course. So, for example, in the Blackboard course I have, our students are sorted by their student IDs. Well, now, that means that you have to make sure the students put their student ID into the mastering course as they register. So when you're first making your course, you're first creating all that initial titles and everything, you can put, there's an option to ask the students for their course ID or their ID names or whatever your school uses. And you can tailor that or customize that to however you want. So it just makes it a little simpler this way to make sure that you know what meshes, what your learning management system looks for when it's trying to import data. So definitely check with your school's IT or whoever manages your learning management system if you're going that way. But if you're not doing that, maybe you'd like simply to take them out to an Excel spreadsheet and you keep track of everything in Excel. Well, when you go through an export, even with this Blackboard 9.x, 
when you export, it exports it into an Excel spreadsheet. It's actually a CSV, or comma separated values. So you click on the export, just go through and just ask you to open up the file. And now you have all your information, all your data in your Excel spreadsheet. From the usernames, the IDs, and all the data you have here. But it's not just looking at going through and exporting scores. You can actually keep track of all the times exporting, export the difficulties. They're all exported as the universal.csv file. So that way, pretty much any machine that can open up a comma separated value file can open these up. So that's the way you get the information out if you need to do that. So there's a lot of different features and options to customize this gradebook to make sure it's working for you. And it's just up here under the Manage button. So now if we're back into the actual gradebook itself, one thing to keep in mind is as you're making assignments, like this one has all the assignments in it already. But I was mentioning talking about those categories, like the homework category, the quiz category, the pretest, the post-test category, is when you're making up your course, before you put any assignments in, whether it's a quiz or a homework, you want to make sure you set those categories so you know what is in the homework category, what is going to be in the quiz category, what are these default settings. Because that way, when you make each assignment after that, every assignment you put in that category has that default setting. So now this is a slight little off track real quickly from the gray book here, but if you click on the Assignments tab, and just a quick little show of how this works. You can either be in this calendar view or list view, either way. But when you go into the Assignments, even when you create the very first one, so if we go back, let's go back a second. So you create an assignment. It's going to ask you about these default settings. This is, again, very important because it helps you line up your gradebook. So once you create the assignments, come up here. I'm just going to create a new one here. Right here, this category. These are all the same categories that the gradebook is going to look for. So I'll put everything with the homework into one category, everything with the lab in another category. But you also have these default grading settings. These settings, oops, want the title first. So these settings are going to be default and set. Like right now, all settings match the default. So you can go through here and change up wherever you need to. But my suggestion is definitely go through this basic, advanced, security. Get this set the way you want it with your very first assignment. So make sure it's set. The first one for homework is set so that way they all the homework assignments are graded the way you want them to be. Plus, that way, they all also go into the gradebook that we want them to be. So they'll fall in the proper gradebook categories. So just kind of keep that one in mind as you're starting to make some activities up there. All right, now, when you start looking again into the actual gradebook, there's other ways to get kind of more of an overview diagnostic. Not just simply drilling down to the individual student, but how did the class do? Or how did this subset do that I'm looking at? So if you click on a title, so if we click, for example, I'm going to click on this Chapter 35 title. When you do that, it takes you into the Assignments tab, but the Diagnostic view. Now, this Diagnostic view, well, it's going to give you a lot of information but again, you can customize it based on what you want. Right now, we have five different graphs. This one happened to only have two questions. But what you're looking at here, and again, can change any of these boxes and play by, play them off, leave them up. But each one of these gives you different bits of information. This one, for example, is showing you how hard each of the questions was. So if you had a homework assignment that had 25 questions, well, you'd see all 25 questions, what their difficulty was. And you could rank it low to high, high to low, or 
or the students see it. Maybe they go from question one to question two to question three. Next over here, student time. How long do the students take on the assignments? It gives you a class median here. They can show from high to low, low to high, or go by student name. Same idea here with scores now. We go back to a by question breakdown. So in this item scoring, it shows you that the average was a 93.9. Pretty decent. You can rank them high to low or low to high. Or again, what is the order? Were the students maybe not doing as well at the end of the assignment because they're getting burned out? Or if you want to look at the scores, you can look at them right by assignment, by student. And again, go by the high low, student name, however you want to break it down. But if you're looking for other charts, you can add different ones in. You can change up what you have here. So you have other choices, other abilities to try to figure out what's happening. So we have all these different M scores of top student scores. So this is more of an overview, kind of like a diagnostic view here, showing the entire course, either by the item in the homework or by the student. But if you want to have more of a summary view, I'm just going to go back into gradebook for one second here, get a different assignment. So if we're looking more for a summary view one, let's click on this Chapter 7B homework. loading up. All right, so now this one happens to have three questions, but you can tell they have different dif difficulties here. The scores were different on each assignment's question, so it helps get a little more breakdown on this one. You can go over this summary view. Now, this is not going to be breaking it down student by student. Instead, what's happening is you're going to go through and have it broken down by the question or activity type. So for example, we have one tutorial and two activities in this particular assignment. You'll notice that it's showing how many students completed each one of these. So in this case, as we went down, fewer and fewer students finished up. It'll give you the idea of how difficult it is in your course, how your students do, compared to the overall system, how the system does. In this case, it happens to match up exactly. Sometimes it's not the case. And it gives you an idea of timing, how long, again, your course was taking versus the overall system. Now, if you're noticing here, the course was a little bit longer, not a big deal, or then a little bit shorter. So it depends, on, again, are the students grasping it as efficiently as you like and give the material as quickly as you like? Or this kind of nice little nifty graph over here, or say bar chart chart, is in this idea, we're looking left and right here, is showing the statistics of your course versus the entire system statistics. The green is telling you how many students answer correctly. Now, this doesn't mean that these students all answer correctly on the first attempt, because depending on how you set your homework up, you may have the students have two, three, four, five attempts at certain questions. This just means that the students eventually, within the number of attempts, got the answer correct. The red is telling you how many didn't get. And again, you compare it to the system, 5% of your students didn't get it. The system, 10% didn't get it. Now on the right side here, you see this orange and yellow. The orange is going to tell you, on average, how many wrong answers there were per student. Now, obviously, you can't have 0.72 of wrong answers, either it's wrong or it's right. But the idea here is, again, it's averaging out across all of the students. So the students, they took a good two, or two to three almost chances to get through to get the right answer. The last part over here, the number of hints. Now, this one is telling you that the students, pretty much everyone on average used a hint, sometimes the two hints for depending on the student. So the students were utilizing hints, trying to get the information, trying to get to that correct answer. So this is just a way of kind of having an overview, more of a summary, to see how your course did as a whole, not student by student.
So it gives the option of being the summary or the diagnostic. This really allows you to get down and get a lot of information out of this, depending on what you're looking for, what you're trying to gain. So if we head back to the gradebook again. Now, in the gradebook, again, if, let's say, you have a student, maybe they the due date was midnight, and the student, for some reason, just didn't get to it, but they did that at 1 o'clock in the morning. Well, depending on how your course is set up, you can go back in, and I'll show you, okay, yeah, the student has a zero score, but all of a sudden you see that their thermometer is completely full, like right down here, for example. Well, in that case, maybe if there was a valid reason, which depends on your course, again, depends on what you set, Maybe you might say, okay, you know what, you got the homework done, I realized there's some computer problems last night, maybe the servers were off or something happened. Well, you can go back into the assignments for that particular student. It would show you what was going on. So this one, you can see all those late penalties all completely removed. And then, okay, well, we can change the due date. You can either extend the due date beyond when they did the work so you know it's correct, or can simply add the points back in. By adding the points back in, you can change it so they get their points back from what they earned. So it really comes down to, again, you can adjust the points if you need be, or you can extend the time frame if it's simpler that way. Or maybe you know that, hey, this student already talked to me, they're going to be out of town for these two days, or they have a lot of volunteer work they're doing, or something's going on. Well, then you can always give them that particular student extended time to work on the assignments. The other students wouldn't have the extension, just this particular student. So again, it gives that increased amount of flexibility of what you're trying to do here. It can really help out in that aspect. All right, now if we shift up here to these view learning outcomes summary. Well, learning outcomes, depending on your school and your course, Learning outcomes can be quite useful because it helps you to look at what specific things you're trying to pick up in your course. Now, in this particular course, we have quite a few learning outcomes put in place, 1243 of them. But you'll notice that a couple of them have this little kind of symbolic person figure here. Whenever you see that, that means that was a learning outcome that was entered in manually. It wasn't already preloaded from the book, but the instructor put that in because maybe it matched their course learning outcomes. Or maybe it was their institution learning outcomes they had to add in. So what these allow you to do is you can take something, in this case, demonstrate the ability to think critically and employ critical thinking skills. And then you can add in questions that show or demonstrate, does the student work and learn based on critically and employ critical thinking skills? These then show you that which every question was. Here we have chapter 9, chapter 2, chapter 7a. Here's the items in each assignment. It tells you the percentage rate of completion. This one's down here. No one did these for some reason but 87% of your students did the rest. That gives you the average score on each question. So if you have to report this to an accreditation body or report this to your school's administration or dean or whoever it might be, it's a very easy way to collect the information, simply print this off or export it, which you have the option above, and then you have all this information, all this data showing how the course learning outcomes or how these learning outcomes were met or not met, or maybe just simply for yourself, am I getting the information across? Are the students mastering? Are the students comprehending the information and the ideas I'm trying to get to them? So this goes through either by a complete custom aspect or ones that are going to be set from the actual book. So depending on the book, the author, you may or may not have these preloaded. But you have the ability to go through and go through all these course learning outcomes. So it's quite a nice tool to have here if you're into using course learning outcomes, either for the 
institution accreditation or simply just to know if your course is working, to know if the students are gathering information and things are making sense to them. All right, so heading back to the gradebook again. Now, with all of these, it all depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to do. I mentioned the idea of dynamic study modules earlier, the idea of adaptive follow-ups. Again, this is going to be a book-by-book -book specific. But the basic idea here, an adaptive follow-up, these are meant to help tailor the students. So for example, again, this could be dependent on how you're on your course, but in my particular courses, I have adaptive follow-ups on my assignments. I have it set where if the student earns 95% or better on their assignments, they do not have to take the adaptive follow-up. They simply get opted out. But if they get even a 94.9 or down, they're into that adaptive follow-up. Now, what these adaptive follow-ups are meant to do is they're going to look at the questions, look at what the student did incorrectly, what they missed, and then create an assignment for them based on the information they missed. It's going to try and help to reinforce those ideas, help to pick up those topics, to help the student learn that material. So I personally think those are quite helpful. But again, everyone has their own ideas. The dynamic study modules, well, those can be quite nice. I have some students this semester that are actually asking for them, because I had it in one course, not another course. I was basically trying to test back and forth and see how it worked. And the students are asking for them because they're liking and enjoying working with them. What they're allowing them to do is it allows a student to get a set of questions. Now, this set of questions could be anywhere from probably around like 15 questions up to almost 30 questions. It'll give the student a choice to either mark it that they know for sure this is the answer, give them a 50-50. It could be this or this, but I'm not sure. Or simply say, I don't know. As the software goes through, every couple questions, it'll pull back and it'll look at what the student did not get correct. So either they said, I know it's this answer, and they were incorrect. They thought it was a 50-50, and they either got it or didn't get it or the I have no clue. It'll then give them information, links to tutorials, links to graphics, to videos, to locations of where the information is, and direct them back to that information to try to help them learn those concepts. And it'll keep on going through questions over and over until the student gets the information and understands it. So it's really a way to help the student to drill down to the information that they're not understanding and then really focus on what they're not getting. The data learning catalytics. Well, learning catalytics, that's more of an in-classroom setting. You could do it outside of the class as well, but it gives an interesting aspect where you can make your own questions or use pre-built ones that you can then deploy out to your students at certain points throughout your topics. What's nice about this is it takes it a step beyond the clickers. It allows you to make a question where the student has to maybe draw a circle around a certain, uh, certain ion, or maybe it has to drag and drop certain features to each other. So it creates a little more of an interactive approach to get those students engaged a little more. And the standard assignment, that's the simple assignments you see right here currently. So there really is a lot of information, a lot of tools that can be put into this gradebook depending on how you have your course set up. And then the one last thing I'd like to point out about the gradebook is not necessarily specific to the gradebook, but overall the whole course. If you go up to this little help icon, now there's always a 24-7 help here because you have it built in. You have all these topics you can search through, but what's really nice are these how do I videos. So if you go into these, you'll see they're all listed out here. But if you go right to the actual page, you then are going to see the actual durations of them. It goes through the actual amount of time each one takes, and they're only a couple minutes long. They're very short. And of course, now the computer wants to be slow. So it'll kick up here in a second, hopefully. 
But this is if maybe you forget how to do something or you're trying something new and it's just not quite working for you. You can go into this training supports. Let's see if this wants to load up. We have color, but nothing right now. And my computer's probably half asleep right at this point. But I'll see that loads hey, Gary, up. Gary, this sometimes happens when you try to use the WebEx platform. So it's like WebEx doesn't like videos playing for some reason, so that could be why there's a delay. Okay, because actually I do this almost every single time. May is the recording? Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant, okay. the recording, yeah. Okay. Thought, yeah, these usually pop up then. very quickly, yeah. Yeah, usually pop up very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Then just go on talking about how it would be there, or what do you want me to do with this one? I'm sorry, what? Do you want me to talk about what would have been there then, or? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Skip, okay. So with those, that help page, if we could get load up, which is kind of slowly not working right this moment. But usually it pops up very quickly, and you have all the videos listed out there by topic, from introductory all the way down to the more advanced editing techniques. It tells you how long the videos are and gives you a little quick idea there. But also on that same page then, on the right-hand side, you're going to end up seeing the help links. There's a link for 24-hour chat in there. There's going to be the email link. There is a phone number to call for educator support. So a lot of different ways to get information and to also obtain information and help if necessary. So the idea here is definitely dive into this grade book. Matt, control it, set it up so it suits your needs, so it fits your style, your teaching. Feel free to use it just for the mastering or use it for everything in your course to pull the information and grades in or take them from here and put them into your learning management system. The key is you have the flexibility to do as you need. So hopefully there are a few things were picked up and learned today. Yeah, thank you so much, Gary, for that session. I appreciate it.